Event Planning, Food and Beverage Services, and Venues. Even if your event is only a few hours long, you'll need to feed your attendees something and supply them with beverages. At the very least, a three-hour board meeting requires a coffee, water, and snack service. If your event is a many-day conference, you'll be planning for and providing breakfast, lunches, dinners, coffee breaks, and a variety of receptions. The old adage, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, becomes a way to your attendee's happiness and productivity is through well-planned food and beverage services for event planners. In this video module, we'll explore food and beverage service types and their benefits, styles of meals and beverage services based on your attendee base, variables you must consider when planning your food and beverage services, and ways you can trim your food and beverage budget without leaving your guests wanting. For some events, you may want to choose a self-catered option. This is when you invite your guests to bring their own refreshments and it is only appropriate for small groups who intend to roll up their sleeves, get to work on something mutually important to all of them, and not waste any time with frills and fuss. These attendees will also have agreed that they want a self-catered event to cut the overall cost of attending it. If the event is about food, a convention of chefs or bakers for example, you may want to host a showcase meal where each attendee prepares a specialty and enough of it for everyone to have a sample. In any self-catered event, make sure you have an alcohol policy and whatever permits you may need for alcohol to be served and used on the premises. If you are having caterers provide your food services, you first need to decide if the food will be prepared on-premise or off-premise. In many cases, your venue will have on-premise food service providers and disallow any other caterers to provide food other than specialty items like weather wedding cakes. If there are no restrictions to using outside caterers, you need to determine if it makes more sense for your caterer to use kitchen facilities, if any, at the venue or prepare all of the food at their facility and deliver it for plating and serving only. Some caterers will only use their own facilities, others are quite flexible. You will also have to make special accommodations for specialty caterers who provide chuck wagon barbecues cooked outside, Hawaiian in-ground pig roast, picnics, and the like. When making these determinations, factor in such issues as food safety, how long the food will be prepared before it's delivered, and heat conditions that may lead to food spoilage, for instance, as well as how the menu choices will look and taste if they are pre-cooked or if they must be fully prepared on site to be optimally fresh and tasty. You may also decide to hold one or more food and beverage services at existing restaurants or pubs. These facilities may be on site or off. Either way, you need to make sure the facility is fully amenable to closing to the public for your private function and willing to create custom menus for your group. Help the facility make closing to the public painless for everyone involved by posting signs about the closing well in advance, making it clear on event day that the place is hosting a private party, supplying a drink or food voucher for anyone who still ends up being turned away, etc. It is also a good idea to notify neighboring facilities that they may have extra business and even provide transportation or directions for those who are turned away. If you bring in a bartender service for any portion of your events, it will be hosted, you pay for the beverages consumed, non-hosted, or cash bar where the guests buy their own drinks or a combination thereof. For example, you may give each guest a voucher for one free drink at a cash bar or host the bar for an hour and then switch it to no hosted. Regardless of the type of service you choose, make sure your bartenders can all make any type of drink requested and or are knowledgeable about any specialty bar services you require such as a wine or scotch tasting table or cappuccino bar. It is also your responsibility to make sure all the permits, licenses, and insurances required for serving alcoholic beverages are in place and current. There are five essential types of food and beverage services common to most events. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, breaks, and receptions. When planning service type and menu styles for each, take into consideration what the guests will be doing before and after the meal. For example, sitting versus doing something active your budget, their age group and interests, etc. Here are some basic op meal options and ideas for when and why to incorporate them. Breakfast. You may want to offer your guests the option to take care of their own breakfast needs so they can have in-room dining or restaurant food on or off site. Many people prefer to start their day in their own way. Some like a cooked breakfast, others only want yogurt and fruit. 
If you decide to host a breakfast, your best bet is continental buffet style with a, a hot meal cooking station. In this way, all the cooked food can be prepared as needed. Even with this option, you should be able to complete the breakfast service in an hour with a proper amount of food, dining tables, a, dining table areas, and staffing. A buffet breakfast is less expensive than a plated breakfast and offers something for everyone. Lunch. Because you will usually be serving lunch between meeting or activity sessions, it's almost always a good idea to provide this meal so that everyone gets back into session on schedule. In a business casual event, you may want to offer a box lunch option so guests can go outside, return to their rooms for a while, or have working lunches. If you served a hot breakfast and have dinner planned, you probably don't need to serve a hot lunch as well. Always make sure there are light lunch options like fruit and cheese and crackers so people don't overeat midday and become lethargic. It is seldom appropriate to serve alcoholic beverages at this time because it takes attendees' minds off the afternoon presentations and activities. Your lunch menu and service should have broad appeal and take only an hour to serve. Dinner. There are really no restrictions as to what type of food you can serve and how or when it comes to this meal. Dinner at events is usually a festive and social occasion, so make sure your menus suit your audience. You can even ask them their preference at pre-registration and that you have at least three menu options. For example, if the menu is Italian, have one meat, one seafood, and one vegetarian pasta option. Asian food le foods lend themselves well to buffet style because so many menu options are small single serve delicacies. If you plan a steak and potatoes fair, make sure you schedule some extra time so people can wait while their steaks are cooked to order. If the dinner is plated, allow a minimum of an, minimum of an hour and a half from start to finish and a minimum of an hour for buffet style. If dessert is served, factor in at least an additional 15 to 20 minutes. Breaks. The basic break items include coffee, tea, water, soda, and juices and quick nibbles such as donuts, rolls, and pastries. It is important that break items can be consumed relatively quickly and are easy to carry around without spilling. As people become more and more health conscious, you'll likely see more requests for fresh fruit and non-sweet options at the break table. Even if you don't, do try to give those who prefer to stay away from processed sugar some healthy options. Allow an average of 20 minutes for each break and expect that attendees will bring refreshments back into session with them. Receptions. Most of your receptions will include a bartender service and your guests will be standing up, milling about, and socializing. Whatever you serve for appetizer type items, make sure they are finger foods that do not require dipping sauces and can be easily carried about without the risk of tipping over, falling off plates, or splashing on your attendees. Also make sure you have plenty of beverage options for guests who do not drink alcohol. A typical reception is at least an hour long, but no more than three. The longer alcohol is available, the greater the risk that some attendees will over imbibe. Next, we'll look at some of the considerations involved in planning each and every food and beverage service. Menu. Follow some general rules of thumb when creating your menus. If the post-meal activity is non-active and or your guests are elderly, avoid spicy food to aid digestive comfort. Younger crowds tend to do better with spicy and exotic foods, but stick to serving those when the attendees will have free time after the meal. Promote healthful dining at your events by offering lots of fresh produce, whole grain, and low-fat items, and limit sweets and desserts. If there are children at the event, avoid processed sugars as much as possible to avoid energy peaks and valleys and the behaviors that come with them. Whenever you can, pull your attendees for their preferences before you begin to craft your menus. Buffet versus Plated For full meals, base your choice of plated versus buffet style primarily on cost, convenience and how long you want the meal to last. It takes at least a half hour longer to serve a plated meal and is almost always significantly more expensive than buffet style. Buffet style is also great for diverse attendee bases because almost everyone will find something they like and appreciate the convenience of making their own choices at their own speed. Boxed. Box breakfasts, breaks, and lunch are great for large venues where it takes time to get from one place to another and events where people will want to spend their breaks away from it all in their rooms, outside or in splinter groups with other, other attendees. They are also great for short duration, high content events when there is a very full agenda. Working. You may want to provide box meals or buffet with to-go containers for some events because the attendees may prefer to work through meal breaks. 
Events where working group need breaks to, for tackling a subject and presenting their findings, for example, leave little ta time for sit-down food services. Past or family style. Past items are appropriate almost entirely at sit-down receptions where family style dining is served to small table groups. This style increases incidence of spellage so it isn't preferred but can certainly be used when the event theme calls for it. Special needs. Always make sure you have full provisions in place to accommodate your guests' special needs, even if you are not informed of them ahead of time. These special concerns include, but are not limited to, food allergies, religious requirements, vegetarianism, and dietary restrictions for medical reasons. For each meal event, you will have to complete a banquet event order, which will be included in your catering, food, and beverage service contract. This document will identify all the details of food and beverage provided for the meal and how it will be served and presented as well as the head count. It will also define the room setup, number of serving and preparation staff, and any audio and visual operations or entertainment that will take place during the meal as well as the type of decor that will be present in the space. It is also very important that this document outlines all the associated fees, gratuities, and taxes that apply. The contract and banquet event order will address such budget items as catering minimums, labor charges, chef fees, bartender fees, room rental fees, and service charges and sales tax, all of which are separate from the cost of the menu. Almost no event planner ever gets the chance to plan a food and beverage event with an unlimited budget. Following are a number of ways you can reduce food and beverage services expenses. Use shot glasses for juice and other beverages like specialty coffees. Guests don't usually empty full beverage glasses and this way they can sample a number of choices without waste. Make sure your caterer can handle special dietary needs so you don't have to use other more expensive suppliers for specialty items. Serve foods in bulk instead of single-serve packages, yogurt for example. You can save up to 20% serving bulk items. Don't keep refilling items at buffets and breaks. When the service runs out of an item, consolidate what remains. Serve sliced instead of whole fruits and vegetables. Less will go further with less waste. Have your coffee and tea service charged by the cup used rather than head count, as much of what's served won't get used. Serve one plate meals whenever possible, for example chicken salad instead of a chicken and rice dish with salad on the side. Skip desserts. Think small and homey like bite-sized sandwiches with soup shots. Have just a few buffet items instead of dozens. Use inexpensive domestic cold cuts rather than high-end deli meats. Use small plates and bowls at buffets to keep serving size and waste to a minimum. Source meal sponsorships. Serve half glasses at champagne toasts. Guests seldom drink the entire glass. Serve four ounces of protein rather than six or more as entrees. Bulk up meals with filling pastas and potatoes, peas, corn, and bread and rolls. If you serve dessert, serve truffle sized sweets instead of full desserts. Last but definitely not least, always green your food and beverage through these 10 easy to implement steps. Use china and reusable dishes, bulk, containers, con bulk container condiments, cream, and sugar. Serve water in pitchers, don't use bottled water or pre-filled glasses. Use cloth, not paper, linens, and napkins. Serve sustainable seafood. Source locally grown and organic foods. Buy only fair trade shade grown coffee. Donate leftover food and table decor. Compost all food waste. And eliminate polystyrene and plastics of all kinds. Now, go keep your attendees well fed, healthy, full of energy, and eager to enjoy whatever comes next.